Welcome to They That Hope with Father Dave and Deacon Bob, sharing humor and hope in a crazy world. And I'm Bob. And I'm Father Dave. And we're seeing humor and hope in a crazy world. Yes, we are. We're also sharing. We're living it. We are living it. We're living it. We're living the dream. We're in the middle of it. (laughs) It's good to be together. It's been like, what, four years? It feels like that. Yeah. Yeah, to be sure. Yeah. Yeah. 2021 was a good couple years long, so it's nice to be. Seriously. Live in 2022 life. Live in the dream now. It feels just like. What what could go wrong? (laughs) No. Exactly. I'm driving around Steubenville looking for COVID tests. Which, which are like more valuable than cigarettes in prison these days. Yeah, you're I not mean, wrong. It is insane <clears throat> how everybody wants you to be tested, and then there's no tests available. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, the more. Yeah, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I just don't know what to do. I really, it's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we had a great Saturday, did we? We not, had Bob? M- we had much fun. We finally fulfilled. Finally, Denton. That's right. We fulfilled we our promise to go see the Spider-Man movie together. You prepared for it. I did by I watching did. only two of the seven potential Spider-Man. But movies I'd to watched. Watch. I think I'd watched the ones with Tobey Maguire. I think I'd watched those before. I'd not seen any of the other those other two. Okay. But yeah, myself and a couple of friends spent a couple of evenings over the last week before. Yeah. Watching them. Actually, it was honestly because it was. We're still in break. It was really fun. We yeah, just yeah. got together and watched it. Well, a lot of the good. friars saw it, right? You weren't you yeah. were out of town then, but I know, like, you know, Father Jonathan, Father right. Gregory, they, <clears throat> they all went and caught the movie. You know, it was funny, too, because it was like, I wonder, you know, when I got back, it's like, so what'd you think? What'd you think? What'd you think? So <laughs> it was good. So. All right. Now, wait. We're yeah. going to talk about it, and we're going to have spoilers. Yeah. Because it's been a month. Yeah. So that's my, that we were actually discussing this. How right. long do you need to get people to see a movie before you can say, okay, you should have seen it by now. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think the answer is a month. Okay, there we go. <laughs> then there we go. Though I think we're technically like five days short of a month. Well, by the time they hear this, we'll be three days short. No, I was I was including that math. Oh, you're amazing. I am. I know. You're remarkable. I'm gonna, you are amazing. You no, are, no, it. you are say amazing. It. You are amazing. So, all right, we're going to have spoilers. Just deal with it. Uh, yeah, fast so, forward, yeah, just fast, fast forward, forward 23 minutes to get to the <laughs> it's next It's not going to be 23 <laughs> minutes. Good night. <laughs> So I didn't realize that you fall asleep during movies. Have, have we gone to movies and you've fallen asleep? So my favorite moment was after the movie when Father Dave looks at me and he says, so who killed Aunt May? Yeah, yeah. How did she die? And, and he just started laughing. And then, I'm like, what? How because, did you miss that part? I mean, it wasn't even like a quiet moment. Like there was explosions. There was a whole fight scene. No, and I missed the whole, uh, the whole uh, scene about, you know, Great responsibility. Yeah, with great power comes, comes great, great. And I missed that whole like, thing. That like and the, I was wondering why Spider-Man was so mad at the Green Goblin or something like that. <laughs> he seems really un- Yeah, he seems really un- mad. Unusually angry at this, yeah, that, so, this, uh, at this villain. Yeah, it's been a long week. And uh, <laughs> I just kind of slipped away for a few minutes. Not for very long, but apparently long, for... Long enough. Seriously, when I, <clears throat> when I told Bob that, the look on his face was just utter. Like, where were you? You've that, got to be. That was like me. the moment, like the mo. That that was a huge surprise for me. I did not. That I fell asleep, or no. the, oh. well, I guess both. Now, okay. the first time I saw it, I was surprised by the movie, and the second time I saw it with you, I was just surprised by you. But um, yeah, I can't believe yeah, that was. I think that was really cool because you know, with this iteration of Spider Man, they alluded to Uncle Ben dying, but they never. Uh, this particular Spider-Man never had an origin story, the Tom Holland Spider-Man. Right, right. You know, when we first met him, um, Iron Man discovered him in his apartment, <clears throat> and he had been bitten by the spider, but we hadn't seen any of that, which I, th- I actually thought was quite brilliant because origin stories are kind of cool, but then you're like, oh, here's, oh, Uncle Ben's dying again. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah. just like another origin story after, I mean, Batman had that issue. So, you know, all all the superhero movies have had that issue, I think, when you've got major characters that have been played by multiple actors for so many years yeah yeah, i mean like how many times have we seen you know batman's mom die like numerous times did you know she died no batman has a mom well she died that's what (coughs) his mom and his dad died in an alley I guess they took him to see a movie or a play. Probably. And for some reason thought it was a clever idea to go Let's through a take dark, a shortcut. A dark, yeah, a shortcut through a dark alley while the kid's wearing a tuxedo. <clears throat> yeah, notice if you are if you live in Gotham, don't do that. Yeah, exactly. And so then somebody comes out and whacks them both, and then 
young Bruce Wayne is left seeing his parents get killed, and that's what inspires him yeah, to, become, be. to become Batman. Yeah, so again... That's um, what's held me back from greatness, the fact that nobody so, assassinated my parents. So family. if we're talking, Bob and I were talking, or I was talking with the Friars about the movie, and my thought of it, it was a good movie, it was fine. Um, actually, I think it's I might have liked the first one better, the first one with the new of the new trilogy better. I thought it was really good. I thought the first oh, one was homecoming. great. Oh, Homecoming. Yeah, I thought Homecoming, homecoming was great. Homecoming was outstanding. I'm not yeah. going to disagree with you on that one. But what I said to the Friars is I said, I think the third one, like, geeks and nerds would really get yes. into the third yes. one, which is exactly why you totally got into no, the third and one. And I can appreciate that. I think in terms of a movie standing on its own, a movie like Homecoming is a way better movie. Yeah. I wouldn't... If somebody wanted to see a Spider-Man movie, I wouldn't say, oh, you should watch No Way Home. It's a great movie. I would I would direct them to a few other Spider-Man movies yeah. first. Yeah. And then from there, <clears throat> say, well, if you liked those, then you'll really like this. You know what I thought was amazing about, because you just saw, did you just see for the first time Spider-Man Homecoming? Yes. Okay. So one of my favorite things about that movie, and I, I think this is underrated in in all the Marvel movies, the acting is exceptional. I mean, you've, you've got the great special effects, obviously. You've got, you know, cool things going on. All the, you know, everything is, per, you know, everything's great about it. But sometimes I think it's easy to forget how good the actors are. And I think the scene in Spider-Man Homecoming, another spoiler, but this has been like three years. So yeah, this is totally, that's definitely. This is good. totally justified. When um, he's taking the girl on the date and the dad's in the front seat and he realizes He's Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And the girl gets out of the car, and he just takes the gun, and he's holding it, like, on the side. And it's like there's no special effects. There's no fight scenes. There's nothing except pure intensity. Yeah. I mean, that's just a moment you're like, <clears throat> holy crud. Like, this is so intense. And they were just able to do it with one shot acting in a car. Yeah, I mean, that's, I'll, I'll give you that. That's when it's really cool. And I would say that there's the scene in... Uh, Black Widow. Have I mentioned Black Widow? Um, fine film. You, fine film. You're starting to have a, yep. an issue with. But Black the Widow. scene at the dinner table when the the Black Widow and her mom and dad are talking about growing up, yep. and and then the the her sister, mm-hmm. and just she never says anything, but just her face, and I'm trying to reconcile this and the hurt and the. It was. I, I agree. That was really great. I do have maybe two more points about movies and then we have to go to the NFL because it's important to do that. It is. Um, we weren't kidding about the 23 minutes. Is the Superman, is he always kind of a salvific? Superman? Like, yeah, yeah, no, no, not Superman, oh. Spider-Man. It always seems like there's more religious undertones in Spider-Man. Is that accurate or no? I would say there's a higher level of morality yeah. with Spider-Man. Yeah, and, I, I, and I think that tends to religious overtones. But yeah, the... You know, part of what I liked about that movie, it was also an exploration of like, I don't know, the spirituality of Spider-Man. I mean, just that idea that what we, motivates we, him we, mo- we always do what is good, even if it hurts, even yeah. if it means sacrifice. We always help people, yeah. even the people that are trying to hurt us. <clears throat> yeah. And I think that's kind of such a... I mean, that's a very spiritual, powerful message, I think. No, only because I've seen a couple of super, over the last maybe six weeks, seen a couple of the Marvel movies, and yeah. and it just seems like that's always an undertone of, of that. I remember when we were in seminary, we talked about, in fact, one of our professors would give us movies to watch, oh. and we'd have to write a little one, reflection. One on of it. those professors. Yeah. Uh, was, Did you watch him in class? Uh, no. no oh, okay, no, well, that's a little after, Yeah, it was yeah, kind yeah. of a, but that was always a good um, experience to be able to watch a film, and then the theologically reflect on it. You know, what does this have to say to our world and culture? And so I found that in Superman. The other is I've gone to another movie uh, within the last two weeks. In fact, the first movie I've seen in a theater for the longest time, uh, the the Wednesday after my dad died, mom and I were just sitting around talking and the new West Side Story movie had All come right. out. And I said, mom, we should go to that. She kind of kind of hemmed and hawed. I mean, so the next day we're just sitting having a cup of coffee and she goes, let's do it. And I was kind of like, what? You know, she goes, let's go to the movie. So <laughs> she and I, she loved, my mom and dad loved the, the musical West Side Story. I grew up with my mother sure. singing all of the different songs from West Side Story in Oklahoma and Paint Your Wagon and all those kinds of things. Yeah, and West Side Story, one of the best score, musical uh, scores yeah. of any musical, I think. Yeah, so I, for those who don't know, it just came out again and Steven Spielberg uh, directed I it. I haven't seen it yet. It I'm was, excited to see it. Yeah, it was fantastic. And I did not fall asleep in this one. Oh, <laughs> is that, that right? Yet? That's nice. But it was really, really well done. The music is great. The dancing's great. The story is timeless. So 
So you thought it'd be really good in the wake of your father's death to watch a movie about people. Well, it's what, funny because... A movie where most of the cast dies. Because mom mentioned that. <laughs> I said, she goes, everyone dies. And I said, really? She goes, well, not everybody, but most of them. So. Not every, the, the last person is there kind of weeping. I hadn't, I hadn't totally thought that one through. Yeah, but, but the it, music. It, seriously, it wouldn't when you matter. Die, when you die with music, it's, it's, it, but not, it wouldn't it's not mattered, like dying at It all. wouldn't have mattered what we went to. It was going to have the same impact <laughs> on me, so... But it was it was great. It was actually really really well done. So if you like musicals, West Side Story's done really well. Yeah, I mean I'm excited to see it. I don't think it's out on streaming yet. I think no, it's funny it's that now every trailer has to clarify only in the theaters, you know, in theaters and streaming. Yeah, you know, yeah. and um, it. But I I I have become really impatient. I just want everything. I just want everything streaming immediately, and I just want to watch it. So. Well, it's good for you to have yeah, to but wait. I, but I still like going to movie theaters. It just Actually, it was on nice. The movie. It's, it it nice. is really nice yeah. to get out the experience. Get a good so nap. Good. <laughs> That's right. A dark place with lots of people where you can take a nap. Yep. Where else can you get? You can't get that in the friary. No. No, you cannot. <laughs> Nor in the chapel. So, Now, congratulations. Your Bucks made the playoffs. Oh, my Bucks made the playoffs. Not only did they make the playoffs, everything worked out just about as well as it could have for the Bucks. The Bucks made the playoffs. Um, the who had to lose? The Rams lost to the 49ers, yep. which elevated the Bucks to the number two seed okay. in the NFC, which means just a higher potential of more home games. Really, they they've locked in the first home game for the wild card weekend, and should they beat the Philadelphia Eagles, then uh, they will have another home game at home, which is what I already mentioned. I mentioned that hence. A home game. A lot of home games. You know, they didn't have, ironically, they didn't have any home playoff games last year. with the Because yeah, they were wild cards, right? Because right. they were wild cards the whole yeah. time, except for the Super Bowl, and yeah. they finally got a home game. So uh, I'm excited. I'm actually going to get to go That's great. Uh, this weekend to the to the wild card game, and I'm so pumped. The last home playoff game I saw was when they lost to the Giants. Gosh, when was that? 06, 07? That was the year the Giants beat. The perfect Patriots. Okay, in the okay. Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was one of like, uh, yeah, Gruden's last games. It was kind of the end of that era of that Buccaneers team that won the Super Bowl in yeah. 04. So. And the Steelers made it to the playoffs. Steelers as well. made it. Just what a barely, So, just I, barely. we like the Steelers. My son is a rabid, rabid Steelers Which fan. Which one? John. Okay. And so, um, yeah, if you didn't watch, so A, not only did the Steelers pull off a win, over the Ravens, which is no easy feat. No, know, that's a, no but that's they a swept them thing. this year. And that was an overtime win. The Jacksonville Jaguars had to beat the Indianapolis <laughs> Colts, which they did. I think that was what their third or third win of the season. Yeah, it was. So the Colts aren't, you know, the Colts were going to go to the playoffs. Now they're not. And then the other random thing that had to occur was the Chargers had to tie uh, the Raiders. If one of them won, the Steelers were in. The only reason they wouldn't get in is if they had to tie. And that game went to overtime and was finished in like two seconds, two seconds left, left so in overtime was, by a field goal. That was very close to being uh-huh. a tie. Uh, and sure enough, they did it. And so the Steelers are in. The Bucks are in. So who's your prediction right now in the Super Bowl? And then, and then we move on from sports. This is it. Lay it out there. Super Bowl is going to be who? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers Okay. versus... Oh, goodness. This would be AFC. I might say the Rams. No, I'm not going to say the Rams. The Rams? No. No, not the Rams. Who's who's number one in the... It's not the Cardinals. The Cardinals were playing great. Yeah, but they're NFC. Oh, I knew that. Um, who's number one? Is it could the be the Chiefs. It could be the Chiefs. Chiefs. I don't think the Chiefs will do it. Maybe it'll be Chiefs. I think Buccaneers the Chiefs are again. playing really, really well. Yeah, they are. And well. I think Green Bay is playing really, really well. Yeah, Green Bay is playing well. But I just want to go for the Buccaneers. And it one of the called, one of the, the friars, podcast is called Day That Hope. One of the friars mentioned that we shouldn't be mean to the Cowboys, so we won't be mean to the Cowboys. They're in the playoffs, though. I know, but they're not going to go anywhere. Who are we trying to kid? Oh, that's just mean to the Cowboys. Oh, that's true. Sets us free. Sorry, Father Jonathan. All right. So you got a oh. word for us? Wait, I do. That's the wrong one. There you go. And now a word from Franciscan University of Steubenville. We hear it over and over. How do you look so good? No, sorry. The best way to know if Franciscan University is the right school for you is to make a campus visit. Registration is now open for official (coughs) campus visit days where you can meet with admissions counselors, sit in on a class, attend daily mass, meet our coaches, take a walking tour, and much, much more. 
In addition to your campus visit, you can watch live virtual events held on Tuesday evenings, where you can have more of your questions answered about our academic, social, and spiritual life and chat with current students and admissions counselors. Come and experience the daily rhythm of campus life here at Franciscan University of Steubenville. Sign up now at franciscan.edu slash visit. That's franciscan.edu slash visit. Thank you. On behalf of Franciscan University. Dot edu slash visit. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Well read, Bob. Thank you. So you're feeling better? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Okay. Praise God. Yeah, I um yeah, you know, from the compared to the first round of COVID that hit my family a couple months ago, uh, I had about two days of just bleh, and then uh, thankfully was able to um, was able to bounce back. And then actually then my other members of the family got it as we started testing them, even ones that had gotten it previous, even ones that had <coughs> gotten vaccinated before. Um, just kind of went through your household. Just kind of went through the household, but it was just kind of a creeping crud, thankfully. Again, like compared to the first round of when COVID went through the household, which was just misery and aching for a few days, this yeah. was just kind of like sinus infection-y things. But that's why I started the podcast saying trying to find COVID tests was just nuts. So I had one of my kids who was going to drive back to college. Uh, he had kind of a bit of a sniffly thing, and he just wanted to be tested before he went back. So... Um, unfortunately we were our boy, I, I miss Joe, our Franciscan stuff went down. Yeah. Like actually after we talked about it on the podcast the next day. So we had to just do what the regular folks do and try to go through the healthcare system. He, he was in line for like a couple hours on Thursday and that, you know, they weren't even, you know, talking at the clinic anymore. So he went back on Friday morning, he got the <laughs> test. He was supposed to go to school and college on Sunday morning, but he hadn't heard until Sunday afternoon that in fact he had COVID. The irony of course is now the new regulation is you're supposed to quarantine yourself for five days at the onset of symptoms. Okay. Well, for Colby, that was Monday. So he <laughs> found out that he should have been quarantining the you know days before. But he was pretty much quarantining anyway. Well, Not because totally, a, but a little. Well, yeah. he was trying to quarantine from us because when we all got it, he yeah. you know he ended up just going in the basement and trying to wear a mask, and he just wasn't sure if because he didn't want to you know take sure. it with him to uh, another college, yeah. a Catholic college out west. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's one of those, actually, I read an article a day or two ago that said that, God willing, please, and we, <laughs> we've been here before, <laughs> yeah. but this may be the last, you know, the last thing is that the, the analogy he used is there's only so much wood that can burn, mm. and, and, and the newest strain, Omicron, is going through, the kind, like just going through a forest and burning everything, and it's not a, yeah. it doesn't torch it, it just kind of scorches it or burns it a little bit. Um, and then it's just not going to have any any fuel to burn anymore. So that's what we're praying for. Yeah, that'd but, be nice. But I think, you know, I don't think I know. People are just discouraged. You know, the people yeah. I've talked to in the last couple of weeks and just, you know, we kind of thought we were getting out of this. I mean, here we are beginning another semester and having to talk about this again and think about this again. Will we keep just, doing the podcast when COVID is over or is this only COVID? No, no, I think COVID. this is just COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. yeah, once there's uh, there's no reason to hope anymore that's, because that's it's right. been realized. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it's funny. One of the things, it just gets like like gets discouraging. Well, on the so, news. Just, yeah, and that's what I mean. <clears throat> Everything is... They know it's like every media outlet is like, you know, let's just say something about COVID today. Well, and, and there may be this new new strain that's coming that they found in New Delhi or whatever. I don't know. So one of the things that I did is I just said I've had enough. So on my feeds, on my phone, and, and yeah. I said no more COVID. You can do that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So I go through my feeds and there's nothing about COVID. The world's actually pretty just, wonderful out there. You just were able to like, say just block any mention of COVID? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, if you were to go through my feeds on, on my phone... Yeah, which I be, won't, because that would be an invasion of privacy. You're right, but there would be nothing about COVID. There would be a lot about the national championship game, okay. about the playoffs. Do you tell that to well, your president's council? <clears throat> I don't want to hear anything about COVID, people. No, in fact, because our next meeting, we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about yeah, COVID, so you right. can't just totally escape it. But but there is something about that that you, know, you and I have talked a lot about, just getting rid of the news. But one of the things I think we can do is to, to try to... 
I don't know, be a positive voice and, yeah. and, and word of encouragement because there's just a lot going on. It's not just that. It's it's inflation and it's things are more expensive and it's yeah. you know, trying to get things that are people are renovating their house and, and they've got a room destroyed and they can't get the new furniture. I mean, it's just like right. one thing after another. And I think we we don't want to ignore some of the issues that are going on in the cult in our culture in our country, but also don't be inundated by it, you yeah. know? We can pick and choose on what we're going to take in through the media, but then also be a source of an encouragement to one another. That's why I was sharing with some of the friars. Going to the movie the other night was great to go to the movie, good to get a, a little nap in. But but if nothing else, just— You are getting older. Yeah, but just, just to get away from everything and just go to dinner. And, and honestly, as you and I talked, as people know Bob lost his dad about two years ago. So there was something just really— good about being able to have a conversation and talk and have a beer and a burger and that kind of thing that they kind of got away from everything and i don't know it was just a blessing so look for people in fellowship to be able to help encourage us and talk about something other than COVID. you know it reminds me of the um the great uh psychotherapeutic advice that you know, from the movie what about bob yes just take a vacation from your problems but sometimes that's just really true you know like just Take a vacation from negative media. Take a vacation from, you know, all those issues that we're dealing with, they'll still be there. Yeah. But you can <clears throat> you can take a break. You can go out. You can relax. Uh, you can turn off the TV. You can, you know, hit do not disturb on the phone. You know, connect with real people. Just say, hey, can we have a conversation where we don't bring up COVID? Yeah. <laughs> and just try to live, you know, live a little bit. I agree. I mean, it was nice just to, especially with everything going on in the house, just to go out with you and... Yeah, have a fun movie, have a wonderful conversation. Yeah, it, it was a healing yeah. gift. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. And the other, and, and we talk about this a lot, but just, and I know people's lives are busy, but I was going to say more now than ever. It's, yeah, always, it's, it's always, always the case. Right, yeah. But just to be able to take some time to pray. I mean, just to get yourself away, get yourself quiet. It's just, we're just being inundated constantly with information and 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 in and the vast majority of problems that we can't do anything about. Right. You know, so to be able to take that time to surrender, to be able to pull yourself aside, quiet yourself, try to escape from the noise and everything and just let go, just surrender the things that are bothering us. That's why I think journaling is so important is you just kind of write down some of this stuff and let it go. So whatever it takes that allows you, and it's not selfish, it's, you know, you yeah. particularly as a busy parent, it's not selfish for you to want to get away from your wife and your kids for a few minutes every day just to be able to do that. So we encourage people to do it, to, to be able to, to live in this world with hope and with positivity and a sense of encouragement is difficult. We need to be able to make sure that we're getting that in our own heart. Amen. Yeah. And I think especially as, you know, it's, it's always, for me, it's quasi depressing and quasi exciting transitioning from Christmas to ordinary time. Mm -hmm. um, the depressing part is I really love, um, I love, I love Christmas. I mean, like who doesn't love, I hate Christmas, right? The Grinch doesn't. You don't. I do like Christmas. No, I just don't, don't like, like Christmas you, movies. No, well, and they almost, are very serious. They're almost, very different. No, they're no different. yes, they, they are. are. It's yes, the, they're the, the incarnation of the savior of the world and Christmas movies are different. Movies are the reason for the season. Oh, I like that. So, um, I love the movies. I love the music. I love, uh, my wife is a master decorator of the house and just, just Christmas yeah. is it out, yeah, 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 you yeah. know? And I, I actually even love, we have three different Christmas trees because, well, part of it is when you give your kids an ornament every year and then you have seven if kids. you've got a large family, <laughs> you've got a lot of ornaments. And, and one of them's 23. It's <laughs> like, uh, that kid has 23 ornaments. And of course, when you begin, of course, you don't just give them one as a baby. You're always like giving them a couple because you're like, ah, oh, the tree's so empty. We need to fill. And then you're like, oh, shoot. Well, now we got to. So it ends up being a lot of ornaments. So we have our main tree, all of which, of course, are fake. And I do not apologize for that whatsoever. Um, we have the main tree, and then we have two smaller trees. We have, uh, my wife has a tree of snowman ornaments. She loves snow people. And then I have my tree, which is a lot of geek culture ornaments. I have a, these, the Star Trek Enterprise oh, is no. the uh, tree mm -hmm. topper. And yeah. It's really okay. beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful. Anyway. I, I get, can't believe I you and I really, hang out. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a tree, what would you put as the topper? I mean, other than like a star or an angel, like something cool. It would, I don't know. It would probably be some sports motif. Something. A baseball. Yeah. 
Yeah. Can we just real quick, since you mentioned baseball, mention these books? Okay. Oh, yeah, we can. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Bob. I don't know the name of the, Tom. the guy. Tom. We'll just say Tom. Okay, so Tom sent Bob a guitar, which was just really, really thoughtful. But he sent me these books. <laughs> they're, they're so cool. They're so cool. They're old base. So this one is from 1975, Who's Who in Baseball. This one's from 74. Those were the first teams I began to follow. There's Pete Rose on the front. Nolan Ryan is just starting off. And then this Baseball Guide record book from 1944. I mean, any, of this, this is, any of those records still standing? I don't know. I just got it. Oh, so okay. I have to take have a to look, look at it. it. But this was just really, really thoughtful. So, yeah, right. maybe it would be a baseball on the top. So thank be. you, Tom. And it'd be filled with baseball players as ornaments. And maybe, maybe. 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 Our, and, and, and Pavanka yeah. from well, the Washington Capitals. Yeah, that's right. But our Christmas, our, it was funny, one of the evenings, like it was um, right around a few days before Christmas, our tree was up with my mom, but we hadn't decorated it yet. And obviously, is everything going on? It was 6.15, we were exhausted, we were both ready for bed, and it's like, we can't go to bed at 6.15, so I said, well, why don't, we, why don't we just decorate the tree? So we said, oh, that's a great idea, so 20 minutes later, we're done. It's like, okay, <laughs> now what, now what? Boom. So. Well, for me, and this gets back to the point, it's always a little sad to take it all down. Okay, oh, like, that's right, that's know, where we were. That, that's where we were. We were talking about me and my feelings yes, for that's once. Right. Sorry, sorry. So it's a little bit sad to take down those you know, ornaments, I, I hit play one last time on my Star Trek theme song before I take the Enterprise down. That's and, great. But I'm also, I really like Ordinary Time. I mean, so, it's actually one of my favorite literature. I don't see it as a default season. Like, li- no. like Ordinary Time is about the life of Christ. Right, it's not to wait till we get to something yeah, else. Right? Yeah, it's not like how many days till Ash Wednesday, you know, or, or Mardi Gras. Maybe people <laughs> usually count down more towards Mardi Gras than to Ash Wednesday. But yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the vibe. You really get to hear the whole gospel during that time. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting because obviously this is the first day of Ordinary Time. It's not the first day of the year because mm-hmm. that would be um, in Advent, but it's the first day of Ordinary Time. And it's I was just thinking, like, what does the church want to say to us? Okay, we're beginning Ordinary Time. We're beginning the, you know, the, the church year. What does it want to say? Very beginning of Mark's gospel. Uh, after John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So if we're going to think like, look, what's going to give my ordinary time direction and what's it going to look like? That's it, right? The yeah. kingdom of God is at hand. And that's one of the things I think that's so beautiful about the church and the, and the liturgical cycle is, yes, we've got Lent, which helps us focus and all these, but the ordinary time is the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah, I mean, the first thing the church wants us to hear is the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, believe in the gospel. What do we do in during ordinary time? We pray for an ability to recognize the kingdom of God is at hand, that God is in our midst, uh, an invitation to repentance, which is always the word that's there is metanoia. It's not just just the repentance of our sin, but it's the change and the conversion of our heart and the belief in the gospel. And then he goes on and he begins to choose his followers. Bam, ordinary time. That's what this is it's about. Awesome. It reminds me of the Luminous Mysteries. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I was so stoked. It was in the 90s, right, when John Paul II... Yeah, it was like was 95. It, was, that, was it that long yeah. ago? Yeah, wow. yeah, 95, 96, when St. John Paul II um, released his encyclical on the rosary, and one of the things was proposing a new set of mysteries, these luminous mysteries. Um, you know, the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan, the miracle at Cana, the proclamation of the kingdom of God, the transfiguration, and the institution of the Eucharist. And really, so much of that is what ordinary time is yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and it's really beautiful... And actually, I mean, it, this probably ties into my love of ordinary time. That's always my favorite rosary to pray. The you know, luminous like, mysteries. The luminous okay. mysteries. Yeah. In fact, it's even kind of funny, like when I'm, I don't pray the rosary all the time, but like when it's Thursday, I'm like, ooh, wait, I want to pray the rosary today, just because I just get psyched. Yeah. I guess I could pray it any day. Yeah, I yeah, yeah to, sure. But um, there's really just something beautiful about the quote unquote ordinary life of Christ. You know, just the fact that he dwelt among us and he walked among us and the ministry that he did. Um, there's just so much There's just so much to reflect on because I really feel like in ordinary time, it's not so much about what he did as much as who he is. Mm-hmm. And like that's really the revelation I see in ordinary time. I mean, obviously, Advent, we're waiting. Christmas, he's born. You know, Lent, he's suffering. Easter, he's risen from the dead. But just that, getting to know him, <coughs> hanging out with him, mm-hmm. You know, that's what ordinary time is about. And I think that's, you know, it's just it's just awesome. Yeah. And I would, you know, we do these New Year's resolutions, which may or may not. I, I mean, I suppose there can be some helpfulness do to you it. Do but them? 
Not usually. Yeah. I just, it's just, no, I don't. But to be able to take a look at the beginning of the year, of the church year, of the ordinary time, and say, what might I want to do? You know, ultimately, the Lord is calling us to be saint, and, and we're provided all the grace necessary to, to make that happen. To be saints. Yeah. But I think just to pay attention to the gospel, you know, if, again, we're, we, we continually encourage people to prayer time, now that personal relationship with Christ that is animated by the Spirit of God. And something to be able to do during this time is just to like, take a look at the gospel. We're beginning of the year. The church chooses the readings for a purpose. And like you said, it's trying to try to accomplish something in us. So next, next week, read the gospel. Yeah. Take, take two or three minutes and read the gospel. And what is it trying to say to you? What what, is our, what, um, what's the cycle we're going into? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. It's, I know it's from Mark, except ever since we've got the Magnificat, you don't have to pay attention. <laughs> you don't have to pay attention to cycles anymore. I think I think we're. This is awful. This is and, awful. And right? it's it's always great because this is, when know Father, this. this is when Father Chris O'Connor's like, why don't you guys just Google? I it? think it's C. I think we're on. Now there's different cycles between, um, or uh, weekdays is, and Sundays. So I think Sunday we're cycle C. We're in cycle B. Cycle B. Okay, and and uh, we're in eighty two. We're into the we're in uh, cycle two for daily prayers. Oh daily right, masses. because the daily masses are a two year cycle. Yeah, and the gospels on Sunday are a three year cycle. The readings and yeah. are, are a three year. And cycle. some people are out there like I cannot believe, but it's just something I we don't, are professionals. Yeah, don't yeah, try yeah, this exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's good you're a deacon now. I know. But I'm just a new deacon. I'm going to play that rookie card. Yeah, but the ordinary, yeah. So everybody enjoy the ordinary time, but be intentional about it. We're intentional about Advent. We're intentional about Lent. Mm-hmm. We're in t- be intentional about this. Don't just let it happen. Take some time in the next couple of days. Quiet yourself. What might the Lord be inviting you to at this time? Yeah, and that grace, I think, of repentance and conversion really is, you know, hearing the, hearing the good news of Jesus Christ, reflecting on right. reflecting on those words as if he said it for the first time. I think the that's kingdom the, of God is in your midst. Amen. And pray for the grace to be able to see it. Amen. Well, Amen. would you pray for that grace for us? Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would illuminate our hearts and our minds, that you are in our midst, that God is with us. As we begin this ordinary time together as a people of faith, as a church, allow us to encounter you and recognize you in every uh, aspect of our life. Jesus, I ask your blessing and your grace to be upon all those who are with us. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you, Father Dave, and thank you all for listening to our podcast. If you'd like to drop us a note, prayer request, a question that we might answer on the show, you can email us at hope at franciscan.edu. That's hope at franciscan.edu. God bless. Bless you guys.